1999. Now this is a year I can talk about. It was a very big year for me. 1999 was the year that I graduated high school. It was also the year I turned 18 years old and technically became an adult. Although it wasn't until 2024 when I was 43 years old that I truly became an adult because that was the year I threw my back out. It was actually last week. I'm still dealing with it. Being an adult is horrible. Don't do it. Anyway, back to 1999. Before we get into the video games, let's set the scene and go through some of the major events of the year. 1999 is probably most famous for the worldwide scare known as Y2K. Everyone thought the computers would shut off or reset when hitting the year 2000, and it would be the end of modern civilization. World banks would crash, planes would fall out of the sky, everyone's money would disappear, power grids would go out, literally the fall of man. But luckily, they updated the computers and everything was fine. Bill Clinton was the president of the United States, Total Request Live with Carson Daly was on MTV for its second year, the biggest musical acts were In Sync, The Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, Moby, Fatboy Slim, Limp Bizkit, Eminem, Santana, Korn, DMX, Christina Aguilera, Ricky Martin, and Sugar Ray, to name a few. Cher's song Believe was the number one song of the year. Mariah Carey had two chart-topping songs that year. I Still Believe, and When You Believe, also featuring Whitney Houston. People liked songs about believing. I guess that's what got them through the fear of the world ending. Cher, Mariah Carey, and Whitney Houston saved the human species. The number two song was No Scrubs by TLC. It was also the year of the tragic Columbine school shooting. It was known as one of the first major school shootings. Times were changing and life was not as simple as it was in the 80s. The Space Shuttle Discovery was the first space shuttle to dock with the International Space Station. The legendary film director, Stanley Kubrick, died in 1999. He died in his sleep at home in England from a heart attack, just four days after screening a final cut of his film, Eyes Wide Shut, starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. He was 70 years old. Eyes Wide Shut would be released later that year. This would ultimately be his last film. The film The Blair Witch Project was released in 1999. I saw it in the theater, and it very much freaked me out. Some other films that were released that year were Fight Club, American Pie, Varsity Blues, The Green Mile, The Mummy, Girl Interrupted, The Virgin Suicides, American Beauty, Cider House Rules, Magnolia, The Sixth Sense, Office Space, Man on the Moon, and Cruel Intentions. In my opinion, it was a very good year for films. The number one movie in 1999 was Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. I remember that being a big deal and people waiting in line for days. Friends of mine skipped school to wait in front of the theater to buy tickets. It was the first Star Wars movie to come out since 1983. The second biggest film of the year was The Sixth Sense. Third was Toy Story 2. Fourth was the Austin Powers sequel. And fifth was The Matrix, all released in 1999. I'm surprised The Matrix was number five. I remembered it being number one, or maybe it was. And I'm now in The Matrix. Oh well, I exist in a world with Red Dead 2, so I'm happy. The Sopranos television show premiered on HBO. The cartoon Spongebob also premiered in 1999. Speaking of television shows, I have to mention the absolute greatest television show ever created. That show is the soap opera Passions. Passions premiered in the summer of 1999. Now, I do not normally like soap operas, but this show is very special. Passions featured a lot of magic and sci-fi. Most people might recognize the show from the characters Tabitha and Timmy. Tabitha is a witch, and she made a doll that she brought to life that helps her. Well, sort of helps her. He mostly just drinks Mar Timmy's. The show is incredible, and I live stream it every single Wednesday. I ordered the DVDs. There's 2,231 episodes of the show. It aired Monday through Friday for nine years. The Sci-Fi Channel started playing reruns because of the sci-fi element. I own the first season on DVD, so I live stream it every single Wednesday here on this YouTube channel. Come on by if you want to watch the craziest show ever. Also, if you become a member of my YouTube channel, you get access to the members' emotes, and you can spam Tabitha and Timmy all over the place. Definitely worth $1.99. Moving on, Tiger Woods was the winner of the 1999 PGA Tour. Tiger Woods was very popular at the time because he was incredibly young for being a pro golfer and he was winning everything. He was 21 when he won the PGA Tour two years earlier in 1997. Tiger Woods also had his own video game titled Tiger Woods PGA Tour 1999, although it was released the year earlier in 1998. That's golf, if you didn't know. He's a golfer, I'm sure you know this, but Gen Z might be watching this and they're really clueless. They might not even know what golf is. The website Napster was launched in 1999. It was basically a place where you could go to download music for free. You'd be downloading an MP3 that another person uploaded. It was considered peer-to-peer -peer file transferring. It was shut down two years later in 2001 because music labels were obviously not happy about it. Understandable, musicians weren't making money from it and you gotta support the musicians. The website Makeout Club was launched in 1999. 
Not many people know this, but it was the very first social media site. It was created by Gibby Miller, the singer of the Boston hardcore band, The Trouble. It was before Friendster or MySpace. It was basically a dating site for scenesters and indie kids. Being from Massachusetts myself and into the subculture of punk and hardcore, I found myself on Makeout Club, where I actually met a girlfriend. On the site, you could make a profile that featured one picture, your age, one line about yourself, and your AOL instant messenger name. It was great. That's all you need. But now social media is a plague, and I suggest you all get off. Save yourselves. 1999 was an amazing year for many reasons. After doing the last video in 1981, when I was born, it made sense to me to focus on 1999 for the second episode. I think for the third, I will focus on 2012, another great year for myself. These three years were very big for me. Eventually, I'll do every year, and I'll have the most videos on the YouTube website, because there's like a billion years. Anyway, back to 1999. Nintendo's home console system at the time was the Nintendo 64, which was released three years earlier in 1996. Sony's system at the time was the PlayStation 1, which was released four years earlier in 1995. And Sega's system at the time was the Sega Saturn, which was released four years earlier in 1995. These are the US release dates, by the way. Much like myself, a free young man released from the shackles of high school, Sega released another beast upon the world. In 1999, the Sega Dreamcast was released, Sega's final attempt at making a home console. The Sega Dreamcast, in my opinion, is one of the best home consoles ever created. The graphics still hold up today. Power Stone is one of my favorite games of all time. I never get tired of that game. And yes, the first is better than the second. I don't care what you say. The Dreamcast was also the first home console system to utilize internet technology. It had a built-in modem, so if you plugged in an ethernet cable, you could connect to the internet. You could even get a keyboard and a mouse for the system. They really promoted online games, which at the time was a new thing. Another unique aspect of the Dreamcast was it had memory cards that could be used as handheld devices to play mini games and raising digital pets. Now people might yell at me in the comments because there were earlier attempts by other companies to make systems that utilize the internet on their consoles, but that's like a whole other episode and I'm not getting into it. The Dreamcast was the first to really push it and it was after that that most systems came with internet capabilities. Don't yell at me. Some of PlayStation's top games for the year were Silent Hill, Final Fantasy VIII, Driver, Siphon Filter, Gran Turismo 2, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Dino Crisis, Grand Theft Auto 2, Madden NFL 2000, and Legacy of Kain. Here's an interesting fact, the best-selling PlayStation 1 game of all time is Gran Turismo, which was released in 1997. The best-selling Nintendo 64 games of 1999 were Donkey Kong 64, Mario Golf, WWF WrestleMania 2000, Harvest Moon 64, Pokemon Snap, Road Rash 64, one of my favorite Road Rash games still to this day, NFL Blitz 2000, Snowboard Kids 2, Army Men Sarge's Heroes, South Park Chef's Love Shack, Mario Party 2, Shadow Man, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer, and of course, Smash Brothers. The first in the series that started it all. I gotta say, I'm not a Smash Brothers fan, but everyone else on the planet is. Donkey Kong 64 was the best-selling video game for the entire year in all of video games in the United States. The top Sega Dreamcast games that came out in 1999 were basically every single game that came out for the system. Crazy Taxi, Seaman, Sonic Adventure, Soul Calibur, Unreal Tournament, Virtua Tennis, Quake 3 Arena, Space Channel 5, Hydro Thunder, Power Stone, Samba de Amigo, Blue Stinger, Ready to Rumble Boxing, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Typing of the Dead, NBA 2K, NFL 2K, Dead or Alive 2, Mortal Kombat Gold, Fighting Force 2, WWF Attitude, D2, Sword of Berserk, Revolt, San Francisco Rush 2049, and of course, Shenmue, a game that revolutionized storytelling in video games. Now, Shenmue was only released in Japan in 1999, and it was basically on like almost the very last day of the year. It didn't come out in America until the next year in 2000, but I want to mention it in this video, so I'm doing it. Soul Calibur was the number one selling Dreamcast game for the year. The Neo Geo Pocket Color, which was a handheld video game console, was released in 1999. Also, one of my favorite handheld systems. The Game Boy Color was the current Game Boy in 1999. It was released the year before in 1998. Pokemon Red, Green, Blue, and Yellow for the original Game Boy were the best-selling video games worldwide in 1999. Red and Blue were released the year before in 1998, and Yellow was released in 1999. Game.com or Gamecom Pocket Pro, can't remember how you're supposed to say it, was a handheld gaming device that was released in 1999. It was a follow-up system to the Gamecom system from 1997. The Pocket Pro system was an updated smaller console. The Gamecom dot 
game is one of the systems I referenced earlier that technically used internet access before the Dreamcast, but this was also a handheld system, so my statement is still true. The game.com also featured a touchscreen. Every game that you got for this system was downloaded from the internet. It was the first video game system to do this. The thing stunk. It looked like you were playing a game on a calculator with dying batteries. The Wonderswan handheld system was released in 1999 in Japan. It was never released anywhere else. It mostly featured games with anime IPs and some Final Fantasy remakes. PC users were operating on Windows 98 and Apple users were using the all-in-one iMac G3 or the Power Macintosh G4. The very popular Apple iBook laptop was released in 1999. PC gaming was pretty big in 99. EverQuest was released that year, a very popular MMO. It was said to have set the standard for what a good MMO would be. The more known World of Warcraft didn't come out for another five years in 2004. Other popular PC games released in 1999 were Command & Conquer Tiberian Sun, the very first Roller Coaster Tycoon, SimCity 3000, Age of Empires 2, Quake 3 Arena, Heroes of Might and Magic 3, Homeworld, Unreal Tournament, Worms Armageddon, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Rogue Spear. Arcades were still doing pretty well in 1999. I myself remember going to the arcade often at the Natick Mall in Natick, Massachusetts. Some of the top arcade games of the year were Garu, Mark of the Wolves, which also happens to be my number one favorite fighting game, Crazy Taxi. Side note, a lot of these games were also Dreamcast games. Another reason many people were buying Dreamcast was because it could play arcade ports, Tekken Tag Tournament, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Dance Dance Revolution, the first in the now infamous series, Dead or Alive 2, Cruisin' Exotica, Golden T99, the third in the Golf series, Hydro Thunder, Metal Slug X, Silent Scope, and Street Fighter EX2+. There were many more, but these are some of the ones that I feel were the most notable. And there you have it. That pretty much sums up video games in the year 1999. Let me know what year I should do next. I'm thinking about doing 2012, but I've had a lot of requests to do more 80s. Let me know what you want me to do, and I'll do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.